Hello, everyone. Thank you so much for joining us for this Women Wednesday. So happy to be here with all of you. We've got a great conversation today about changing the lives of women in Africa. But first and foremost, we want to make sure that you share this post, tag a friend, and also engage with us. Share your comments and questions with all of us. I'll make sure to get that on the screen to our speakers today. So first of all, let's start off with Miss Barbara Westcott with Women Wednesdays. Hey, Barbara. Yeah, hey, everybody. It's a, it's a great day. We're going to have a wonderful conversation, and I'm really excited about it. And uh, before we kind of get going, though, I was just going to quickly, you know, give a little recap on some Women Wednesdays things, because, you know, what is Women Wednesdays? And so Women Wednesdays is about building collaborative um, networks of women so we can support each other in whatever we're building. And I think that's something that we're going to see today from today's guest. I mean, it's really hard if you're trying to do a business, an effort, a nonprofit or, or anything. It's hard to do it alone. But if you can tap into the power of others and the, their minds, their knowledge, their skills, you know, you just can go, you know, you can go further together. So that's the whole idea behind Women Wednesdays. And if you want to get involved with our group, you just go to womenwednesdays.com. It's as simple as that. And uh, I was just going to mention, we, um, Christy, we'll go to our next slide. I want to mention one of our new programs that we have is co-walking. And we did this yesterday. And right now, every single Wednesday, I mean, excuse me, every single Tuesday at 10 a.m., we've got a walking group at Cascades Park. And this is designed so you can just hop into our co-walking group, or if you want to start a co-walking group, just let us know. Um, it's just networking and walking all at the same time. You know, we're all pretty busy, so you can knock two things off with one one effort. And then I want to tell we're going to be doing something pretty exciting. We're launching a program called Women Doing Business. And the whole idea behind this project is, you know, we want to highlight the women that own, run, businesses or are part of the group of women that make 80% of consumer purchasing decisions. So it's a really important effort. Women are the fastest growing group of entrepreneurs and this effort is just to highlight and showcase that. And in fact, as part of that, if Chrissy, you wanna to go to the next slide, we're actually having a community launch and celebration of this event. So a week from today, next week for Women Wednesdays, we are gonna actually have an in-person outdoor event to celebrate this kickoff. There'll be city leaders there, our yeah. members, and people from the community. So it's going to be at Railroad Square Craft House, um, you know, on Wednesday, May 12th, from 11:30 to 1. And we're going to be doing a ribbon cutting with all of the chambers in town. And there's going to be a photo shoot of a, you know, the amazing women we have here doing great work in the business community. So let me. That's what we got cooking right now for Women Wednesday. So let me hand it over to Tamara. Hi, everyone. I'm Tamara Smith. I'm one of the hosts here on Women Wednesdays, and I'm also a regional director of, uh, for the Panhandle for an awesome nonprofit organization called One More Child. You can find out more about what we do for foster families, single moms, family support, anti-trafficking efforts, and child hunger efforts at onemorechild.org. I do want to highlight that May is Foster Care Awareness Month. So a salute to all of the foster parents out there. And if you want to find out more about how to either support or become um, a foster family, you can find out more once again on onemorechild.org. We will actually be partnering with an organization called No More Orphans on June 6th to do a special event all about foster care awareness, how you can help, how you can serve, or how you can become a foster family. But I don't, I, I would be remiss if I don't shout out teachers this week. It is Teacher Appreciation Week. I'm a former educator that is at the very foundation of all of my career moves. It was the hardest working years of my life. I want to salute all teachers. I always wear my t-shirt, pay teachers more, because that would be the ultimate reward for all educators out there. So whether you're an educator or you are a support staff, we want to salute you this week and we appreciate you. Yay. Now, that yes. sounds good. <laughs> teachers are awesome, especially during the pandemic. We all learned even more how important teachers are to the, to the foundation of all that we do here, um, whether at Women Wednesdays or in every part of our lives, our children need their teachers. So 
For Women Wednesdays today, we are talking about an important topic. Um, we have discussed before period poverty, which really just addresses the, the lack of resources and knowledge um, for menstruating people all over the world. And that is something that we will continue to talk about today with Wings for Change Africa. Um, give me one moment. Yeah, so let me, I'll just jump in here tomorrow if that's okay with you. Yes. So, you know, I was, I was, um, you know, we recently had Amaya Wayman on here and there was a big community effort about addressing period poverty. And Amaya Wayman, she's a, she's a high school, high school student from Rickards High School. And she started um, the Girl Flow, which is about addressing period poverty here in our own community. But then on Facebook, I saw this post from Kathy Gomer. It was mm -hmm. you, Kathy. I, I saw a post from you in Wings for Change, and I, I just thought, well, that's super interesting and super neat that we have someone looking, you know, looking further and addressing these issues, you know, in, in communities where it might be even, an even greater challenge. So Kathy is here with her colleagues um, that are working on this issue. And so she's here to tell us about Wings for Change today and the work they're doing. So Kathy, if you and your team can sort of introduce yourselves and then let's just get going and hear about your project. Okay, good. I'm Kathy Gomer. I'm Maureen Jolly. And I'm Sixtus Kudet. Well, great. So go ahead. Like we want to hear about it. Tell us about, you know, what's Wings for Change? Why did we start it? What's going on? Why is it important? Wings for Change has roots that go back about two years. Um, I was um, in a Zumba class with Jane Marks and met a young lady that had just gone to Uganda. Through her and a Facebook connection, I met some other people that she knew that were in Uganda and I started just becoming friends with them. It started as a relationship. We talked about issues and they started telling me about the, the period issues and the stigma that is basically all over most of sub-Saharan Africa. Um, there is there are totally illogical beliefs about why a woman has a period and why she bleeds once a month. Um, they believe that they're cursed. Um, women are not allowed to provide for their family in terms of, of, of cooking for them um, because they think they're dirty and there's something wrong with them. Now, that sounds like something that would have happened in the very, very, very dark ages. But this is, this is 2020, 2021, and this is still occurring in some parts of Africa. Um, when I started meeting more people in Africa from different areas, they confirmed everything that the original person had told me. And when I said, well, Maureen and I are former flight attendants, and we are in a group called Silverliners, and we have a chapter here in Tallahassee. We also, through that Silver Myers, which is a social and philanthropic organization, we have to have charities that we have. We didn't really want to give money to somebody we didn't know. We didn't want to give money and not know where it was going. So we decided, well, I met this, these people in Uganda, and they need, this girl says that school would be pads. So we can do it. Sure. We can do it. Sure. Come on. We did it. We Go ahead, Mari, you tell it. Uh, well, we um, there was four of us: Diane Sorensen, Sherry Jackson, Kathy, and myself. We decided we could do this. We can send them pads. This is not not a, a real hard thing to do, and, and, and it really wasn't. Um, we kind of coordinated. We worked together, and we raided every single dollar store in town for sanitary pads, which was great because you got sixteen for a dollar, which was wonderful, and we filled up four large suitcases, and I mean large suitcases. Two were, were shoes and clothes. Oh. Two, two suitcases were shoes and clothes, and four were sanitary pads. For a total of 8,000 pads. Um, two nights before we were getting ready to deliver them to the man who was going to transport them to Uganda and Columbus, Georgia, we decided I called up Kathy and I said, Kathy, we have 8,000 pads. What are they going to attach them to? Do they have underwear? No. So we did what we call the big panty ring. We went to uh, Walmart and anywhere we could find underwear and collected as, much, un as many underpants in different uh, sizes as we could. Packed them all along with the 8,000 pads, shoes, socks, 
clothes, whatever we could get in those suitcases, which were donated, and the generosity of a lot of our friends and ourselves, the four of us, contributed a lot of the money to, to getting these pets. We transported them over to Columbus, Georgia, which they were then um, shipped on Delta to Uganda. Well, as things go, some of the pets got lost, and uh, about half of what we sent over got there. But that's okay, because half is better than none. And uh, we decided that sending the pets may not be the best idea. Maybe sending money to people that we trust over there who could get the pets, which would allow for a lot more pets. So that's what we did. We, hooked, we got hooked up with this uh, wonderful organization in Jinja by Paul. And he um, has an orphanage and a school. And he was able to help us, and we started sending him money, and he was able to get pads and go out in the community and spread them out. And it was just amazing how many women uh, had no idea uh, uh, what to do with them or why they even needed them. They didn't realize that conception and pregnancy went along with preg uh, pregnancy went along with your period. And not only that, they didn't know about diseases. And, and breast cancer and uterine cancer and endometriosis and all of these diseases. So Kathy said, we not only need to send them pads, we need to educate them. And so Kathy took on the responsibility of educating and sending all the information and pamphlets and things that they would need so that they, they have a better understanding of feminine hygiene. Yeah, and I, and I and think that's, that's super, you know, it's such a good example because like one thing we talk about with Women Wednesdays, there's something called lean startup model. And I, I try to bring it up as often as I can because I think it's really important. But the, the sort of the general concept behind lean startup is that it's, it's forward motion. It's building something, you call it a minimum viable product, but you just get started, you get going, and then you learn and iterate as it goes along. So like for you, you know, you started out, you're getting these pads, you're shipping them from here, you're getting them there. But the wonderful thing about that is that you learn from it. And then you find out, okay, look, we need to find a local resource. You know, this is some further things. We need some more information. But I really applaud you because, I, I mean, that's the way to do it because you learn so much from that. But I also think that your people, you have that entrepreneurial spirit. And that entrepreneurial spirit is in a lot of people. It's like you see a problem and think, you know, we can help with this. We can, you know, we can affect some change. So I, I love that you're doing this and I, I think you went about it. So keep going, tell us more. Oh, okay, and then after um, he was able to purchase the next, oh, well, let me get, let me go back then. The first time that he um, taught the classes, because that was part of the original agreement, <coughs> was that they were gonna teach about the reproductive system, excuse me. <coughs> And the first time that, um, the first few days that he did it, because it took us several days to, through different people, um, different groups of people, they were they were just overwhelmed. Um, and the word got out to the villages. Mm -hmm. People, you know, political politicians were coming and say, well, you just give this, the money to us and we'll distribute it. No. no. And he asked, will we do, will we, you know, Paul asked us, will we go along with that? No, it will stop right now. Um, because we want the personal relationship and, quite frankly, we want a little bit of control. Um, because it is not unknown for people to use pads as a way to um, to find sexual favors from something else. That's pretty much uh, abundant in Sub-Saharan Africa in, in some areas. Um, so, no, we would not do that. So he was asked... We did several small areas, small groups, you know, along the way. And then um, at the very beginning of, I think it was the beginning of May, they were, it was International Women's Day. And he was asked to come and speak to a group of about 60 women. And he told me about it. So I sent him enough money to buy enough pads for 90 women, thinking, okay, you know, more will show up. 900 showed up. Yeah. So obviously he could not give 900 people it's even one pad. Story. So he didn't do it. He didn't distribute any pads. He simply educated them. So a week later, he went out into a very remote village and talked to women there and their husbands um, and young and young students 
about the reproductive system. These people were absolutely overwhelmed. One gentleman who had three wives said that he will not allow any of his wives to cook for him when, they, when they're bleeding um, because they're dirty. So when he gave them pads, and they also demonstrate too, and part of the education is they demonstrate to the girls with a pair of underpants and the pad, how to use them. And they give them really good instructions on how to dispose of them and how to clean themselves. That's topic, we'll get to that. Anyway, so he's out in the, out in the remote part of Uganda with these women. And we, had, we were having one of our flight attendant meetings that day. And at lunchtime, I get this little buzz. And these women are just going, Ooh, screaming, screaming and yelling. And, yelling, and, and their arms are flaring. And they're so happy because they've not had this this type of treatment or this care or has anybody even thought about them and so it was really exciting it was it, it's one of my favorite videos it's those women just dancing with joy because someone Absolutely. understands well, well let's face it i mean these these type of products are really expensive and you know they're they can be hard to come by Oh, and yes. I think like, you know, you sort of alluded to some of the challenges in those particular areas. There might not be access to water or access to other things that that people, you know, need, you know, during right. that time of the month. Exactly. And that's that was a big deal because I asked about their bathrooms because silly me initially said, I want to make sure that the girls know that they can't throw them in the toilet and flush them. <laughs> There is no toilet. There are no toilets. <laughs> and I said, okay, explain this to you, please. And then it's a latrine, basically a hole in the ground. And then he sent me pictures. The nice part about it is these particular pictures that he sent, photos that he sent me, it was a brick building that I thought was really kind of cool. And then all these little rows of ditches or canals, I guess you'd call it. So um, the girls generally, if they don't have that, then, then they throw more dirt on top. Am I telling this correctly, since this? I'm sorry. Okay, and then they throw more dirt on top, sort of like in your family. Um, then some of the girls um, have to take their pads and they have to burn them if they have them in their homes. Um, in fact, some girls aren't even allowed to sleep in their homes. And if they do sleep in their homes when, they're, when they have their period, a lot of them have to sleep on the dirt floors because they don't want the blood to get on them. One of the, the really uh, instrumental reasons, too, for these pads is they can't go to school. If they have their periods, they can't go to school. They, if they're soiled, um, it, it alerts men and boys that, oh, they have their period, they have pain. It's okay to rape them. Because it, it takes away their pain. It takes away the pain. So there's many, many reasons that these women need these pads. Um, just feminine hygiene, uh, Kathy, uh, had a, uh, Paul had sent Kathy a picture of a woman who had breast cancer. She didn't even know what was wrong, and her whole breast was just eaten away. She had no idea she had breast cancer. No medical care. The rates of um, um, cervical cancer is incredible from HPV, uh, and that's not that's a subject that hopefully one day we'll be able to have address um, in more depth. But it, it's incredible. And the urinary tract infections. Right. I mean, abundant. So abundant. There, there's a great need. And also AIDS. Um, we have, now we have, we have uh, the ginger area, the um, uh, uh, Sabai area, and um, South Missouri province. And we're getting ready to add Kampala. And just this morning, I got a message from someone else um, there in Uganda saying, can you please help us? I mean, they're finding out about this program. Can you please help us? We need it badly. Um, and so your your big goal now is like you, you've set up this nonprofit. You're here in this community and with your church and, you know, people that, you know, want to address this issue. So your big part on this side of the of the ocean is to do the fundraising and awareness about this issue. Exactly. Exactly, and I, we, we weren't going to get to this till later. But um, what I'd like to say to the people that are listening, if you have in your business or your church group or your um, your ladies group, groups, any women's group, um, please let us know. I mean, we'd be happy to provide you this information. It 
it really doesn't take a lot of money um, to, to do what we're doing. I mean, it's not, well, the, the larger we get, it will, but but as a whole, you know, just one, one group, it doesn't take that much money. Because every, yeah, every dollar here is worth so much more. Over yeah, there. let's fix this. He can address that too. Yeah. Um, so uh, we have been. I mean, we've had all the nice stories about you know how we first saw this problem, how we identified this problem, and how it's been um, um, an issue with girls and women uh, back in Africa. So um, it was necessary that we had to um, establish ourselves. We had to put together, you know, a certain entity, a certain body, which we now call the Women's Change Africa. To you know, bring about um, um, tailored solutions to these problems that we um, uh, were talking about. So um, the, uh, these solitary parts that we we're talking about down in Africa are very expensive to get. And so what we are doing is partnering with organizations in Africa that are also looking at what we are doing right now. So we partner with them. We are not we are not there ourselves, but then we work with them together to make sure that the vision and goal that we have is being fulfilled. So there are many organizations right now that we work with down in Uganda, in Ghana, um, in Nigeria, and Rwanda as well. And so um, all what we're doing is like um, getting getting all these organizations that have the same vision with us, that think the same way as we do, and then we come together, build a good, good, you know, um, um, we build a very good and concrete um, solution that we can provide to um, these ladies, these girls. And everyone um, um, in Uganda that is facing um, these major issues that we are talking about. Yeah, and I, and I, you know, I can see, Sixtus, I can see, you know, I'm, I'm kind of curious how you got involved with this project, but I can also. <laughs> <laughs> you might be thinking that he came to church. He came to church. Yeah, that's, that, um, it's a wonderful story. A very, very amazing story. You know, uh, I like to make it short, though. So um, I, I, I met a very wonderful man. Person who is my mentor who um, spoke to me about uh, wonderful things he's doing um, um, down in Tallahassee with um, so many people. And one of these nice people that um, he mentioned to me was Kasi Goma. And so uh, we had lunch one day and we spoke about, you know, the, um, she spoke about um, Uganda and then how um, she's been so attached with um, um, some projects in Uganda. We, we spoke about it and then it was, was wonderful. I said, wow, this. This is a big opportunity for me to, you know, um, get myself um, involved. I mean, not just um, um, doing it for any, um, um, for my own good, but you know, for the good of all these people that we see in Africa. I've, I've, I've lived in Africa for more than 20 years before coming to the United States, so I've seen how people live. I've experienced the hardship. I've experienced, you know, the um, um, the, the bad sides of, of living there, the good sides as well. So um, um, being someone with such, um, having such um, huge experience of that uh, um, standard of living in Africa, um, I felt that I could, you know, bring something on board to the vision and then the, the goal that um, um, uh, Kadi Gogo was having in terms of like reaching out to um, females and then not not just females. I mean, we said that um, there are young boys being involved in the education of, you know, um, 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 in the in, in health education. So. It was wonderful. I felt like, well, it's a good stepping stone for me to um, build myself and um, also promote, you know, um, 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 female organizations because uh, I, I still take a look back home and I wonder, you know, how many female organizations do we have? How many organizations do we have right now that stand for female, um, you know, um, 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 female health, female reproductive health, and all of that? You only see very little, you know, and so um, to to be a male that you know, who stands for um, such a very essential uh, work is, is something that I I, I, I prioritize so much. And so that was that was a wonderful decision I ever think I made in my life. Yeah, well, you know, I mean, it's, it's so critically important to build your team and to build a diverse team, you know, with different knowledge base. And I could see how, you know, just building out this team, having some, you know, different viewpoints to be able to, to you know, build, like I think an important thing for you all is building those strategic partnerships that you have, which are critical. Um, to what you're doing. And yeah. this young man is getting his master's in computer work and that website that you viewed. Yeah. Yeah, I know. I checked it out. I checked it and out. speaking of team, we do have Sophia that I'm yeah, going to bring on right there. now. Hey. hey Sophia. Hello. 
So, so it's it's kids. you want to talk to us and tell us all about it? Yeah. Um, yeah. So I just came out of school and ran home real quick to get on the meeting. Um, yeah. Do you want so do you want me to talk about sister to sister? Yes, please. Okay, yeah. So um sister to sister is a uh, organization I started our a chapter of Wings of Change for a better for a better term. But um it so St. Peter's gives out these things called salt grants for the youth and that basically they're giving money for me to be able to start this fundraising project. Um the focus of Sister to Sister is centers around forming an organization of young teen girls who will fundraise, pray for, and connect with Ugandan teens who are already affected by Wings of Change and their ministry. So basically the main goal of the program is to create a living social environment for all teams evol teens involved. And it's about like creating connection between teens my age throughout high school and teens over there so that we can they can kind of see where it's all coming from and they can get to know God and we can get to know God on a deeper level connecting over oceans. That's really cool, Sophia. So that, cause I, I keep, I bring, bring this up, Amaya Wayman, I don't know if you've heard of her, but she started a project here in Tallahassee called the Girl Flow. And I, I just see some really great synergy, um, you know, for you all working together and what you're trying to do. But I think building those personal relationships are critically important. Yes, ma'am. Yeah, that's great. And yeah. so what are, what are some, how are you gonna go about that? What are some of the things you're gonna be doing? Yeah, so the main, the two main focuses that I've come up with are work, are doing video calls if possible or sending videos back and forth in a pen pal kind of relationship so that we can get to know things about them um, and they can get to know things about us. And then the other focus that I'm working on is fundraising for these girls so it can go to Wings of Change and they can, you know, use it how, like however they do. Um, recently, Ms. Gomer actually showed me or was telling me stories about this, both the football team and a uh, well, I guess they call it football over there. They may six to correct me if I'm wrong, but it's like the soccer team over there. Yeah. <laughs> um, so the soccer team. Sorry, <laughs> sorry, my mom just entered the room. Um, so um, it's like a football team um, that needed that really was in need of these pads, and so we're gonna help them out. And they don't have they're like really struggling with soccer balls, and they, as you can see, they have to create their own soccer balls. And so um, I'm also hoping that some of our funds can go towards that as well. But yeah, I'm excited to get even like so girls who play soccer here and who will potentially be part of Sister to Sister and girls who play soccer over there to have a connection and kind of, you know, compare sports and see like how they they play it differently and just things like that where we can build closer connections, even though like the, even though oceans do separate us. Neat, really neat. So Kathy, maybe you want to get back to addressing more, you know, what's the impact you're having with girls over there now? Like, what what are you hearing back from the girls you're reaching? Oh my goodness. Not just the girls, but the girls' parents, uh -huh. their brothers and their fathers, who are saying, why haven't we done this a long time ago? We need more of this. And they're talking about the education, not just the pads themselves. They're talking about the education and how important that is. The comments that I see on Facebook that, that the African people say, it, it blows me away. Some of them have even, some people in the community that were merchants um, have even contributed as a result of it. So this, this is getting information. I mean, it's getting information out there and people are beginning to recognize this is something that needs to be addressed. Um, did you ask me, what was the question? <laughs> um, anyway. You know, you know, I'm kind of like, you know, oh, the response from women. Yeah. Well, as, as I told you just a little bit ago, the women that were, that were hooting and hollering because they were so happy, the women and the young girls that are that are able to get to the computer to send me messages are, are thrilled. They cannot thank, they say, I cannot thank you enough. One of them that is a teacher um, in, in the program over there said, I wish I had only had this when I was in high school and college. One thing that we didn't bring up a few minutes ago, speaking of high school, is that the girls in high school, or women in general, if they do see blood on their clothing, they're bullied mercilessly. I mean, it, it, it's, it's terrible. Um, but they are thrilled to death. They want more. And as I said earlier, I've already gotten at least one message today saying, can you include us? Can we, can you, you know, here we are. We need help too. So they are thrilled to death. Uh, in some of those picture, pictures, I don't know if you've seen them or not. The ones, do you have the ones with the girls that are walking around with the, the posters in their hands? The, um, 
and they're saying we need change and when the first we first started doing this this was before we became wings for change because at that time we were 11 flight attendants old flight attendants that were gathering money and sending it away and um some of the impacts are so usually um back in Ghana, back in africa if um the girl is bleeding you will usually be um sent back home to um stay at home and not to go to school so you know um after they started this whole project of like sending um, um money down there to get um, um parts of people or ladies um these girls were able to like go to school from monday to friday without you know um, um not stopping on any other day just because they're bleeding and so that was like a huge effect it increased in their performance and then generally when we receive um, um our reports uh, from the various um, organizations that we work with um, in africa we realized that there was a whole lot of improvement academically from the ladies that we had provided um these surgery parts for because we were able to you know go to school regularly on a regular basis and do what they can uh, i mean what they were not able to do um on a regular basis based on the fact that they probably might be leading and so this actually had a very huge effect on them academically. And then um, also, you know, mentally, they were able to recognize and believe in who they are, you know, um, because one thing that falls well with people is the identity. And so uh, for them to believe that, you know, I'm a female, I'm, I'm this, and I stand for this, you know, that was very, very important. And that, that you know, established themselves very well in, um, um, in the identity. Another thing too, um, what do you, is that part of the agreement we met the partners and and Sixtus is totally responsible for this part and um but we have a requirement of them that we get a monthly report on how many girls are absent from school as a result of this to see if it's working it's been 100 yeah so um administratively um when we started this whole project i mean we, we realized that we needed to keep records we needed to you know, keep going with um uh, with our vision and with our goals, and so we um we try to um, have this um official partnership like I, I spoke about. Uh, we had this um official partnership with various organizations from Africa where uh, they get to report to us um quarterly and then yearly, so we know what we are doing. We, we try to see the effects. We try to um quantify the impacts that we are making in every community that. Well, uh, we have partners in, and so all these partners, you know, down in Africa, you know, give us a response. They let us see, they let us have a feel of whatever our money is doing down there in Africa, and so um, um, that that gives us some little bit of confidence in what we're doing, and you know, it motivates us to keep going with um, the good efforts that we have been doing. Um, so all I'm, kind of, I'm kind of curious, yeah. like for Sixtus, for you as a man. Has there been an evolution in your thinking on this subject? Absolutely. Uh, there's been so much, um, um, you know, evolution to like um, what I thought of, and, um, you know, when I was younger. Was that, I mean, there have been like a lot of stereotypes, you know, down and up and even here as well. So, and um, growing up, I, I, I mean, I never cared about it. I, I was like, it's not my problem. You know? It wasn't my problem. It was their problem. That was what I thought. But uh -huh. you know, getting to understand and realize that. This isn't just um, a feminine problem, but then a general problem that we have to all take about, um, you know, in the world. I, you know, that that changed who I was. That changed how I could think about, you know, problems. Because sometimes we try to just isolate problems that are related to a particular gender or related to a particular group of people, um, instead of just looking at it at a, um, you know, at a larger scope. So um, that was the the biggest part of it. You know, having me see a problem, not just identifying it by um, a, a particular group of people, but seeing it as a problem that not only just affects the, that group of people, but affects uh, directly and indirectly everyone in the society. And so that was my first change, and I, 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 like, I was so excited when I got to realize that this had an effect on me. I was so excited. Yeah, because it's, you know, it's like changing the way people think. And I know, Tamar, you have a question. I do, because uh, when when you're talking, I'm thinking to myself, even here locally, there's a lack of, I think, um, education for the men or for the non-menstruating people 
um, in yeah. our community where a lot of times they do think that this is something that, you know, that women and menstruating people deal with on their own. And yeah. what are, if you can, if you can speak to this, was there any pushback in sharing this education and this knowledge or how did you get um, men there on board with learning this information and making it a part, making themselves a part of the solution? So um, one major thing that we did was to try to um, pose this problem as a problem for everyone. So not just um, um, female. So what we did uh, best was trying to let each male over there understand how this affects them. You know, Take, for example, in, in an African home, um, a male wouldn't want his wife to cook for him since the wife is bleeding. I mean, if you wouldn't want your wife to cook for you because she's bleeding, then you wouldn't eat as well. So that directly affects you in a way. So trying to then explain it to them in these ways that, well, you have this in place, but even though you have this in place, it still affects you indirectly. And so they begin to see how, you know, um, all these stuff affect them indirectly, even though they are not themselves that are not leading. So we started to pose these, um, you know, uh, um, these sort of scenarios to them, let them understand that this is how these things affect them. And then if we all come together collectively, we can all, you know, um, well, we can all um, minimize um, um, some of these problems that we're talking about. I think that's I think that's powerful because that even speaks to the mental health and emotional health of the women. Um, once they're getting that support, um, a lot of times, you know, we we know and there's jokes made about it. There's stereotypes. There's myths, but we all know about the emotional and mental implications of having a period each month um, as well. They're very real. Um, and uh, even the medical community in, at times has problems addressing this. So I think it's powerful to have the, the men being more supportive of women going through this time. But I wanted to ask another thing. You talked about your partnerships um, that you formed in order to start this work. You started as a group of people who saw a problem and wanted to address it. And that has evolved into Wings for Change. Mm -hmm. um, how do you go about finding those partners? And if somebody's watching today and says, I want to get on board right away, how can they do that? Oh, OK. How, how it initially happened was um, the three of us, and actually, five, there are five former flight attendants here at St. Peter's Anglican Cathedral. And we just happened to flight attendants and for different airlines at different times. And we got to know each other, and then Sixtus was introduced to us. Um, and plus, all of our friends and people that we have in the community, in the church, and elsewhere, would would give me money um, to to contribute to this. Yes, and um, so I'm back and forth, you know. And my banker comes up to me, and he's saying, "I don't know what you're doing, but they're going to start looking at you as as you're a person that's money laundering to Africa." And I said, but I can prove everything I've gotten and what I've done. He goes, no, you need to get it, not for profit. So in the meantime, I had spoken to our former Archbishop of the Anglican Church of North America, who was here in Tallahassee with us for a couple of years. And I told him that I was taking money from people from St. Peter's. And as a joke, I said, so you're going to slap my hands? And he said, of course not. I'm going to send you to someone, which happens to be um, Father Bill Krisner, who was Sophia's father. And he's going to help you to get a not-for-profit status. Now, I'm a registered nurse. I'm a former flight attendant. My partner here, she's a former flight attendant. We have we know nothing about accounting. Nothing. If my checkbook isn't right, I just add or subtract. It all works out. You know. So I mean, that was that's that was our background. That's where we're coming from. So that happened, and we went ahead and proceeded with all that. Yeah. So also with like the partnership that we are uh, we talking about, um, what usually happens is that we look out for people that have the same vision as we do, people that look out for um, you know um, female health education, uh, people that look out for um, the wellness of like um, girls and boys, you know, um, um, at their very young ages. So these are like some of the things we look out for in, uh, um, in, in you know a possible partner. So. 
um, usually um, you there's an application that you fill, you send your form, you, you fill it out, and then you look at you know um, the criteria that we have set for. Usually um, you have to be also a non-profit organization where you know um, you're not doing this for profit, but then you're also doing this just to support you know um, um, our society. So uh, basically, we just look at your vision. Um, what you want to achieve, you know, what you want to do, and if our visions, you know, look more alike, then we, we can work together. So um, definitely, that's what yeah. we do to partner with um, other. And and there, for instance, we have a, a group, another ladies group here in uh, here in St. Peter's, and that group is contributing to Leagues for Change. Um, prior to our shutdown, um, other women's um, um, uh, professional um, organization for education, or no, professional education organization, PEO, um, had asked me to come speak to them. And um, of course, we couldn't because we can't yeah. get together because of the pandemic. But I've had several other women's organizations that want to have information. COVID has slowed us down so much that it's just frustrating. But maybe it was good because it gave us a little more time to, to get our act together. Um, but those are the kinds of groups that I think would really, really like like to to join us with this. Um, you really do have to be a not for profit, just as a sixth has said. But if you're just a group of, of women that play bridge or whatever, and, and you get together and you go, I want to support that. You don't have to be a not for profit to support that. Just contact either Mari Jolly or myself, Kathy Gomer, and um, or Wings for Change Africa on Facebook. Or any of y'all, because you can tell me too, um, and see, you know, and we'll be glad to get with you. Yeah. Um, what, what about people that want to get involved um, with their time and energy? Is there is there an opportunity to get involved that way? It's growing. Yeah, the, the, <laughs> the, the, there are like lots of opportunities to get involved. Um, one thing we're trying to do, just like um, so you speak about, is um, creating this um, one-to-one relationship with um, the ladies and women down in Africa. So we are, um, right now we are building a, an electronic system um, on, the, on our website where you can get connected to um, some of these ladies and women that you're supporting down in Africa. So we have something like a peer mentor. So um, we, we want to get people involved who you know want to also give uh, um, um, their expertise, their, their, their knowledge to um, um, these women down in Africa. So that we are not just only giving them money or just parts, but then we are trying to build them up, you know, mentally, um, and, and also just um, build them up in, in sports, you know, whatever it is. So we are looking for people um, um, in, in various, you know, um, um, area of work, wherever you do, I mean, what, wherever you are, whatever work you do, um, there's one way or the other that you can support, you know. And Sophia, how, how are you growing your peer group to do what you're doing? Yes, ma'am. So these are like really, I don't want to say early on, but right now I'm working on starting like a timeline of my events of exactly how I want to do this because because of the school calendar, things are a little bit off since we have, to, you know, different public schools in the area are getting out at different times and so on. So I'm trying to um, sol solidify my timeline and then I'm starting an Instagram as well and spreading it through my main account. So that way as many girls as possible can join this organization and contact me if there's any interest whatsoever. Um, I'm planning on having like my first official meeting, hopefully over the summer, and then like to continue on going through schools and such um, afterwards. So that's the current plan. That's outstanding. Well, you know, any way that we can help you, you just let us know. And so, so for Kathy, what else do you want us to know? What else have it, would you like to share today that we haven't discussed? Uh just just to get up you can get in touch with us at um can they down you do yeah so our um, website. you can you can find us on um uh, www.wings4 on the number four changeafrica.com and uh, you can see what we do you can um you can send us a message over there um you can just you know um have a brief look at um, um whatever projects that we're working on and whatever you want um, get connected with us too. So um, you can also um, give us a call uh, on um, our numbers 850 
1838. Um, so um, anything that you want to like get connected uh, to us with, we are, we are available and we are ready to find out with you. And you can contact us all as well through um, through Facebook. Um, I'm Kathy Gomer or Mar Maureen Jolly. And six is yeah, six is good. Yeah. yeah, and also you can we can connect on Florida uh, Capital Silver Liners. Um, we have a website, yeah, which is our group, not a website, but a uh, Facebook page. Facebook page. And uh, we can uh, communicate with you and let you know what you can do. Uh, there's a little bit on there that tells about some of the projects we've had, and uh, we just if you're a silver liner, uh, if you're a flight attendant. An ex-flight attendant, contact Kathy or I. We'll show you how to get involved. We're a great group. There's a lot of nice women and men, and we have a great time. Together. Yeah, and, uh, and not just involved just for wings, huh. but for silver liners. It's social and right. And we yeah, have fun. And we're fundraising yeah. and doing this. Well, one of the things we're trying to do in Tallahassee and with Women Wednesdays is to make Tallahassee a number one city for women. But I, yeah, number one. But another thing is, is like this city is really doing a lot about period poverty and these issues for women. So there was a big event called Galentine's Day. I don't know if you saw that. This whole big effort to get, you know, a lot of product and get it out to people in the community. But I, I just think there's a lot of momentum and a lot of interest and energy on this subject and whether that's doing it locally or, like I said, globally. And, you know, for you to be, you know, there's just a lot going on in this space right now. And it's clearly something that is getting a lot of engagement. And so Chrissy just popped up something we have at Women Wednesdays now. It's called Pageless. And one of the things we did for Amaya, who's, you know, did the Girl Flow project and um, getting, you know, product to girls. I mean, she, she started this effort in Tallahassee. And she's actually been a part of getting it. Leon County Schools is going to start making sure that there's product dispensers um, for all the schools. There are some girls who just can't afford this product. They're missing school. Um, mm -hmm. You know, we're, there's challenges here too. You know, I don't know that they're as, as extreme as they are in other places, but the fact that this community is, you know, supporting this and really working on it. Um, is amazing and and um, Sophia you might like to know this too because Amaya is going to build teams at all the different schools and again her effort is to get um, you know get people to help deliver this product to people who need it but I think your mission about building the relationships with other you know girls in other places is something that will really have impact as well so I love what you I just absolutely love what you all are doing and so, um, Wings for Change, do you have any closing words that you'd like to share? Just thank you so much for having us on. It's really funny because you were saying that the other, it, you know, the other organization had just come up and, and then you, something sparked your memory. And then, because I wasn't even thinking about putting anything on Wings for Change. I mean, putting anything on Women's Wednesday. And I thought, what the heck, I'm going to do it. Look what happened. So I'm just going to encourage other women out there that if you're in Women's Wednesday, go for it. Because right. I think yeah, no, you've given us this we have in this, Yeah, we have a Facebook group, and anybody can post on that. So if you're doing something, let other people know. And if you need something, ask for it. You know, there's nothing wrong with that. And I, I just think our community is going to have incredible impact on this. And I think making this improvement for women and girls here and around the world is amazing and we can do it mm -hmm. and you know what I'm, I'm really I mean I think you to me it sounds like you have a lot of momentum and like really great things are going to happen and you've got a great team you've got these strategic partnerships I mean I think you're going to have impact with a lot of women and girls and you know yay to you that's something really to celebrate well, thank you. we have a we have a great board of directors too um we have a CPA Chris Blagger uh, mm -hmm. Freddie Brown of, of Echo um, uh, Pam Valentine, who's an MD, a psychotherapist, uh, and Liz Bidwell, uh, who is a nurse, a pediatric nurse practitioner. So, um, and Bishop Thomas now, who has enormous experience in, in Africa. Uh, he's retired. Um, also, I would like to say hello to my friends in Africa because they got this information too, and they're watching all the way over there. It's between 8 and 9 o'clock there. So, hey, everybody. Thank you. Well, 
And to them, to them. Maybe we're going to win the prize for the furthest audience away. So. <laughs> right. Well, you you probably will. Well, I I want them to know over here that there's a lot of people here in Tallahassee, Florida, that care about you and want to see you, you know, just shine, be able to go to school, you know, not have to, you know, have these sort of challenges. But we're there's so many people in our community that are here to support you, you know, and, and excited to see you succeed in whatever it is you do and be a part of that. So all of you, thank you so much for being here today. We're just so blessed. And, you know, I just really look forward to watching your project and, and see where it goes, because I know it's just only the beginning and it's just going to have an amazing amount of impact. So thank if Chrissy you. doesn't mind, thank I'm you. just going to recap again. So thank you again. Chrissy's going to pop up a slide. I just want to remind everybody that um, next week we're having a celebration. You know, we're going to be doing a kickoff to celebrate women doing business. So that's whether a woman owns a business, whether she runs a business, or just acknowledging and celebrating that women make over 80% of consumer purchasing decisions. I mean, women are a just critical part of an economy. And I'm sure women in Africa are too. I hope that they're able to have businesses and, and you know, thrive and be successful. That's what we want for everyone. So you know, make sure we'll be posting some information, but make sure you join us um, for our kickoff celebration. We'll have city leaders there and all kinds of people um, to really put focus on women doing business. And then finally, Chrissy, I think there's one more picture. I want to say, you know, I told you we're trying to be number one city for women. We're going to be doing a photo shoot um, with Elena Johnson from Teodora Studios. Um, with women taking pictures, showing um, individual pictures, and then she's offering headshots to highlight um, the women of Tallahassee and make it in a number one city. So it, does anybody else have anything else they want to add before we head out? No, just thank you again. Yeah. Well, thank you so much. So everybody have a great week, and I hope to see you next week um, at our kickoff for Women Doing Business and Wings for Change. We're so proud of you and Sophia for all that you're doing and, and love to be a help in any way that we can be. So have a great week. Thank, Thank you. you. Like, comment, and share this video. Yeah, absolutely.